Hello, good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, what time it is, everyone joining us. Thank you uh, for being with us uh, this time after uh, I think a few weeks we didn't have a live stream. This time we have uh, the one and the only Gil Raviv. The... Hello, hi everyone, I'm Reza. Hey, how are you doing? Good, good. Really excited to be here today. I'm not used a lot to do live sessions, so uh, <laughs> that, uh, let's see how it turns out. Yeah, that is, that is fantastic to have you here. So where about in, in US are you? I'm uh, based out of Chicago, uh, like a 50 minutes drive uh, from uh, downtown Chicago, some that, sleepy suburbs. That is good. But I don't think you are driving much, <laughs> much to Chicago these I, days. I think I, it's it's quite dangerous to even try to let me do it. It's like <laughs> I forgot. Uh, <laughs> we should, what we should mean to drive these days. We should pass another licensing exam these days after COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably after they send me a license to go to an office and uh, prepare a, co a cup of coffee. <laughs> Great, awesome. So. Um, uh, for those of you who might not know Gil, he is, uh, he is a Power BI MVP. He is also one of the fast track solution architects for Power Platform. He has been uh, last year and this year as well. He has books on Power Query, very good books. I definitely highly recommend you to go and uh, read it. And he has a good blog containing a lot of useful information and also some template apps of using uh, Power BI. Uh, so I would let him to introduce himself in a second. Just one thing, if you have any questions, feel free to write it in the chat window. We'll definitely uh, check it out and I'll pass it to Gil uh, when he's presenting. Gil, can you please introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, feel free my to... name is Gil Aviv. Yeah. Uh, I am a... Uh... Some of you who are into this industry of Power BI from day one may know me for a very short while when I was part of the Microsoft team. At the time, I was responsible to take Power Query uh, into Excel 2016. Got in love with this technology. Power BI was just being released and I made the decision to move from developing software to uh, work with clients and bring the good uh, the good world of Power BI into into the community. Uh, Microsoft MVP wrote uh, actually only one book, that but it was translated also to Germany and Polish, so you can count it as three books. And, um, and I think you have like a multiple editions of that, right? Uh, I, this is like a single edition only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only one. Right. You know, if you write it the right way. It can last for many years. That is good. <laughs> so, that is great. Uh, it is uh, more, than, more than three years now, and still uh, most of the book is extremely relevant. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think I'm just, I was fortunate just to be in a position to bring all this data together, all these uh, tutorials and techniques with Power Query. Uh, and my, in my day job, when I'm not, you know, dreaming at nights about Power BI, writing blogs or uh, building a uh, Power BI apps on App Source. Uh, I, uh, I work in Avanad. It's a global company, uh, like 35,000 employees worldwide. And I'm responsible for the Power BI uh, capabilities at, at Avanad. So really excited to be in this role. Uh, it's really fun and cool and also very empowering to work with clients and build Power BI and do the magic that in the past would take many, many people to do. Now a single person can be can be a miracle worker in large enterprises. So this is really fun. That is great. Awesome. Thank you for, for the introduction. And uh, I, I would not hold uh, you anymore. If you want to share your screen and start your presentation, please feel sure, free to do so. Sure. Uh, okay, great. So let me know if you see my screen. Yep, we can see that mm -hmm. perfectly. Perfect. Clear. Okay. So today, today I wanted to talk about uh, Power Query in a, a bit different, different angle, and that's about uh, bringing your Power Power Query skills into scenarios where you can provide significant value 
to your organization by developing low-code data quality automations and auditing tools. So all of us uh, work with Power BI a lot. I assume that the audience that we have here are Power BI practitioners. Uh, I know some of us uh, don't really know enough about Power Query, unfortunately. And if that's the case, I, I hope that uh, uh, this is going to change in the near future because the technology is amazing. Uh, but I, today, the focus of the, the discussion is how, uh, for those of you who are already familiar with Power Query, and you, you understand the impact of this technology to your business, how you can leverage it uh, as a low-code data quality uh, solution for auditing purposes. I will share with you today uh, some high-level uh, principles very, very quickly in a slide deck, and then we will move to some uh, real cool demos, including uh, uh, the, the, the access that you can get into a free Power BI apps that you can install from Microsoft App Source that will allow you to follow exactly everything that I do today on the fly uh, to, to build, we'll build in uh, less than 40 minutes uh, a data quality automation solution. Okay. Uh, I already talked about myself, so I will skip this slide. Uh, you are welcome to reach out to me at my email address here in the slide if, if needed. And also on my blog, uh, you'll find also contact information there. So let's start very quickly. Why, why is it uh, interesting, important for any business to have a good data quality automation? Um, this slide tells it, tells it all relatively very, very straightforward. In any project that you deliver, it can be a software project. You, you may build some uh, business applications or it's a reporting or BI project. The data quality is the most important element. If your data quality is low, and if you cannot detect it on time, you will end up with a lot of surprises and a lot of issues. Worst case scenario, the problem will come when decision makers will not have the right data. And uh, in between, you will just have lots of projects delays, and this is becoming very, 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 very challenging. In addition to that, uh, data quality is also extremely important in AI scenarios. So if you develop uh, AI solutions, uh, and this quote is from Andrew and G, you know, uh, Andy was the co-founder of uh, Coursera. Uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar with his, with his machine learning classes that are available online. So recently he published uh, in an article a statement saying that if 80% of our work is data preparation, then ensuring data quality is the important work of a machine learning team. In other words, it's not enough that the data scientists will spend time in optimizing their machine learning algorithms. It is extremely equally important that they will work on automating their data quality to be, to be served for their, for their models in a very high quality. And if you are working with low quality, then your machine learning algorithms will, will perform poorly. So it's also important uh, to have data quality in place for AI uh, as well. Uh, if you are into the business of uh, working with uh, data quality uh, in your organization, you can either be in a position where uh, people in your team are working uh, hard on manual data quality testing and audits, and it's a lot of repetitive process. Or you may purchase some high-end tools, like the ones that I mentioned in this slide, to be able to have a, a, a poor code data quality solutions for your organizations. And then the main challenge is that it takes a lot of time to develop these solutions, to customize them. You need to pay a lot of licenses and, and, and probably hire very sophisticated people and, and skill set to be able to deploy those solutions into your data. And as the data keeps evolving over time, you basically need a low code approach to cover the data and be able to streamline the, the quality of this data. It's not enough to, to do things manual. It's not enough to have pro code solutions that, that, that automates everything because it takes time to, to add more data into the, 
into those automation solutions. And if you are using a low code approach, then you have uh, perhaps a better chance to cover more data as part of your data quality automations. So in that, with, with that in mind, I was thinking of uh, providing a solution using Power Query, mainly uh, Power BI data flows, to use the low code elements of Power Query to tap into any data source and then bring it into a solution that will start a tracking snapshot of the data. And then with the snapshot of the data, we can detect different, uh, different uh, uh, breaking changes, uh, regressions, uh, and outliers and trends in the data that, that we may want perhaps to investigate. So in this slide, just give, can give you a kind of a screenshot from some uh, a client demo uh, that, that I presented recently, and of course the data here is masked, and so I'm not revealing anything in particular. But in this case, imagine that you may have a, a, in your company situation where hundreds of Excel workbooks are being uh, maintained over time. And every time that the data uh, analyst or the owner of each one of those spreadsheets is making a mistake, is making a change in the data, uh, forgetting to fix a formula, or perhaps copy pasting data from other systems and then something is breaking, you would like to be able to monitor those changes and detect whenever something bad is happening. So in this case, you can see on the left, we have a very complex Excel spreadsheet. We are going to use uh, uh, Power BI data flows and Power Query to very easily extract the meaningful information from that, that Excel file. And then we bring that into uh, the solution that is available for you on Power BI App Source. Okay. So with, without further ado, let's move to a real demo. So uh, the starting point for our solution, let's start with the with the end to give you some motivations, you know, to start to stay with us uh, as we go through the through the relevant steps. Uh, I recommend if you will go to Microsoft App Source and here uh, let's search for uh, data chant, which is my blog name or my provider name for uh, for releasing apps on uh, App Source. So you see I have here, uh, I'm very proud by the way, for having eight uh, applications uh, already. Uh, and of course they are all free, so you can enjoy using them. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, the data flows snapshot analysis. That's the free uh, uh, data quality and auditing tool that we are going to demonstrate with you. Before we will go there and explain it in more details, I also wanted to say, if you are working in projects that use Microsoft Dataverse and you want to be able to have auditing capabilities on top of your Dataverse and not Power BI data flows, you have the equivalent uh, app, data flow snapshot analysis dash power apps. This, this version will allow you to apply the same, the same scenario of uh, uh, data quality and auditing on your Dataverse tables. So let's start with uh, uh, data flow snapshot analysis. You can go uh, under app source to, uh, to, to get this, uh, this app. I will click on the get it now. And here I agree to get uh, Microsoft to send my uh, contact information to myself. In your case, if you install it, uh, you'll, you'll share your contact information with me. And then you install uh, the app like any other Power BI template app. You can install it now on your Power BI tenant. So you see now I'm going to click the install button. And in a second, I will get here installed the relevant app. Okay, so here, this is the app. Let's click here. So the app in general, just let's see the demo data before we do anything else. The app has three main pages. You can also go, you can click on the instructions to go to uh, my data chant article that explain exactly the information about the app including all the instructions of the configurations and explanation of each one of uh, the relevant uh, elements of the visualization and the limitations. And of course, 
we will try now to do it all on the fly together. So uh, as a starting point, just in terms of the visualization, you see you have three main pages. The first one is a summary that, that converge together two main elements of the application. The first element is the ability to track changes in records. So you see here, we have three types of differences of records. We may have new records, missing records, so new records, missing records, or changes in records. Okay, so for example, when I click on changes in records, I can see over time how many changes I have. Every time that we do a refresh of our data flow, I will be able to see how many records were changed over time. Okay, so this is just as an example. Here on the right side, I have the other type of data that we collect, which is the profiling elements of all our, all our tables. So here in the differences table, this is our differences view. We have a, a big matrix showing us for every record what was the meaning of the change, in what row the change was, was made. Sometimes we can provide also our specific row moved from 108 here to 109, and then the column and the amount that were changed. So here, for example, we have, we have a value that was changed to zero, and we can say, oh, does it make sense that this column, that this amount uh, for, for, for the revenues table in April 1st made this type of change? We are not expecting that. That may be perhaps a regression in our environment. So we can now go and monitor and, and try to uh, mitigate why the change it ma it was made. Of course, you can go and slice and dice by all the tables that you have in the data flow to see the different changes and uh, look, inspect, uh, inspect the different changes over time. In the profile sections, you can select one of seven profile KPIs. So basically on every table, on, on every column that you have in the table that you monitor, we run the average count, distance count, max, mean, null count, and standard deviation. So let's, for example, click the standard deviation. So now you can see over time, every time that I refresh the data flow, changes in the table categories in the column sales by category were, were made and resulted, and resulted in this standard deviation change in, in the sales by category column. Okay, so this, this visual allows us over time to inspect inspect changes. So for example, if the standard deviation will suddenly be very low, it means that we have relatively a very low diversity of our values and, and it may reflect some bug in the system. Of course, we can also count how many nulls. So a significant number of nulls will reflect also uh, some probably bugs in the system. In this case, you see, we don't have any nulls throughout the entire refresh. So these this, uh, kind of capabilities are what you get out of the box. And now I would like to quickly show you how we can orchestrate uh, a data flow to connect to this application and allow you to have this uh, data quality and auditing capabilities. Uh, one more point to say before we start is that everything here that we have is basically uh, customizable. So once you install the app, you can go to your Power BI workspace where you installed it. So in, in my case, this is the Dataflow snapshot workspace. You have access as the installer of the app, you have access to this, uh, to this workspace. And here you can set all the different parameters and, and the data source settings, but also open the Power BI report, go to edit mode, and start designing everything here as you see fit. You have the access to the model from, from the editing experience of the Power BI report, and you can customize things in a way that will better you know, fit the things that are more important to you in your own data. Uh, I'll pause here. If, uh, do we have any questions so far? Uh, sorry, not not a question in a specific, but Damu is saying that thank you for your good book. Uh, my question is that would um, 
would people be able to like download this PBIX file and do any changes or they have to do changes only online? Uh, that's a good and tricky question. <laughs> uh, the, PB, the PBIX file uh, is something that I keep uh, at this stage for uh, for uh, for Evernet clients. So, you know, if you want something more customizable and you want some, you know, a, a significant, uh, significant uh, wide coverage solution for uh, data, then you, you can get this as part of an engagement. Otherwise, the only way to get uh, that to change is over, over the browser. Uh, but you can also contact me, and I can give you some tricks and tips of how what it would what it took to me to build it. And also on my blog, I I give some starting points for how I build this solution. So it is basically it is purely everything. It is Power Query logic, and um, the ability to use merge, for example to find, to match between records is the core of the solution. And the use of table.profile in M code, a simple, a simple line of code, table.profile, allow you to get the profiling knowledge for all the data. Awesome, thank you. So uh, let's start by uh, now bringing some data into this solution. So I, I'll just open here very quickly. I prepared it in advance uh, another workspace. So let's open it and show it to you. Uh, it is called, uh, where was that? Test automation. Okay. So just wanted to show you here. Uh, I prepared in advance a workspace. Uh, before I started uh, bringing those data flows to make it working, it is really important that first of all, most likely you may want to use data flows either in premium or in premium per user, just because this will allow you to build the linked entity, you know, linked entities and have more functionality uh, of a pipeline of transformations. Having said that, the solution can work also with Power BI Pro. You can run your data flows in Power BI Pro and, and it will still work. Okay with the limitations of data flows, uh, uh, but it can work for you without the linked entities. So uh, here in this example, uh, the, works, the workspace that I created, I used the Azure Connections tab to assign here just to, sh to show you, uh, I'm assigning here in the test automation, uh, my Azure Data Lake, just to show you, so here is my Azure Data Lake, and I'm assigning it into this workspace. Okay, let's see. Uh, something is maybe broken. Let me just for a second check it out again. Okay, it's already connected. Okay, so you see now I have, I brought. This is not the out of the default experience. When you use data flows, Microsoft provide you their own data lake that they manage. You don't have access to that data lake directly. In this case, to make the template app working for you, it's important that you will, you will connect your workspace into your own data lake. Once you do that, you get from Microsoft for free the ability to any data flow in the workspace that is connected when you refresh it, let me just show you. I will take this data flow here and I will refresh it. And due to this refresh, so you see here I'm doing a refresh. I have four tables in this, this data flow, categories, cities, colors, and revenues. And I can now go and open my Azure uh, Storage Explorer to show you uh, that because of this refresh, I have a new snapshot in Data Lake that I can review and, and track changes and audits. Okay, so everything here is still everything that you get for Microsoft. It's not relevant at all yet to anything that I provide to you from the app that I shared. You get it for free with zero implementation and zero configuration. All you need is to assign your own Data Lake into the workspace where you have the relevant data flows. So you can see here when I open my data lake, 
you will see in a minute a container, a blob container called Power BI. This is the container that is used by the Microsoft service. And here I have a folder called Test Automation. This is the workspace, the same name as the workspace, Test Automation, that I use. And these are the two data flows that I have. And when I go to the one that I selected and refresh, you will be able to see, let's pick, for example, revenues. Under revenues, under the revenues.csv snapshot, you will be able now to see if I will now sort the data by last modification. So you see that today, a, a minute ago, a new snapshot was created. So this snapshot was created because I, I triggered the refresh on the data flow. Okay. So now the, the app that I have on AppSource, the snapshot, uh, 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 the data flow snapshot analysis, allows you to tune the system into this specific environment. And then I am running the differences between each one of the snapshots, conduct the profiling for each table, and also track changes across the different records. Um, so, sorry yeah. to interrupt the question. Is that does it work only for Gen two or or there's a way to we can get it? Working? It doesn't matter. Gen two, Gen one, uh, it should work the same. The data flows, the data flows implementation stores the data on the data like in the I think in the same format. I did actually test the solution with Premium Gen two and without and with Pro. So it, it supports both versions, and you can even flip between Pro and Premium and do refresh, and it will still work. By the way, when you flip between Pro and Premium, you may lose revisions. There is no migration path between Pro and Premium. The structure in the data lake is a bit different, so, so it's, it is recommended that you will decide which license you use and stick with it. Okay, thank you. And, and here I just wanted to show you, and this is the, 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 the nice thing about Power Query as a low-code data quality, right? In this case, right, we just use data flow to bring data into, into a data flow. So, you know, now you can come to uh, any business, any team within your organization and ask them, do you have uh, any automated data quality? They say probably yeah, no, right? And then you can ask them, okay, where is the data is being stored? They will tell you it's a SQL Server, it's Oracle, it may be Excel file like the demo that I show with you now. And as long as data flow have a connector, a Power Query connector to the data source, you can bring it into the data flow and start using the app that I shared. So in this case, let me just show you very quickly. I just loaded the data from an Excel file uh, I have, uh, I'm using here also some uh, more, more sophisticated techniques. So for example, uh, here in this data flow, the source of the data looks like uh, it's already a pivoted table. So the data is not being aggregated in a, in a good shape or form. You see the shape of the data is not very, very friendly. And I use the technique that I showed on my blog to do a sequence of unpivot to get the data into this shape. So now after I clean the data to this shape using low-code power query, the snapshots will be with this format, right? So now what does it mean? It means that now every change that will be made in the Excel, I, I have the semantic understanding and the context of the data in a, in a tabular format that allows me now to to, uh, to explain the changes in a more meaningful way than rather saying in column AA and row 105, something changed from A to B. Here you will be able to say for uh, the purple products in accessories uh, uh, of category helmets uh, in United States and such and such, the value changed from 83 to another number. Okay, so, so you have using the data flow data preparation you can orchestrate, you can harvest data in a smart way or in a naive way and bring it into the solution. So, so I have these four tables 
And now I want to show you how a, a, a working solution look like. But before we do that, let's also uh, very, very quickly explain the parameters. So in the parameters of the solution, I will not go through all of them because we don't have a lot of time. Um, but basically, and everything is explained also on my blog, so you'll be able to read it uh, from the instruction page. So here you see I provide uh, the data lake account name, the data flow name. To save, uh, to save uh, some time and performance, I can tell here how many snapshots I want to be able to audit. If you put here a, 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 a different number, I think by default, I think if you use minus one, uh, or sorry, no limit, if you will type here no limit, then I will run through all the revisions and compare each one, which may take more time. So I don't want to do that. So let's keep only like three. Uh, it asks you whether you want only to show record changes or also new records and missing records. So no means that you will also show new records and missing records and not, ju not just changes in records. And the one thing that is important is here is, and, and I explain it in more details in the instruction, is that basically what you would need is to uh, download from my website an Excel file and this Excel file, let me just show you very quickly. Let's open it. This Excel file is a very simple one. It has basically only uh, two, two columns, and you explain here which tables you have in the, in, in the data flow. In my case, I have revenues. I have colors, I have cities, I have categories. These are the four tables. And then I need to explain to the solution what is the composite keys. So for example, uh, for color, I only have a single column which is called index and every different record has a unique index number that represents a different color. For the revenues table, I don't have any key. It's a combination, it's like a fact table of aggregations of all these elements together. So my unique key is the combination of these six columns. Okay? And cities, I have a country, state, and city as the com com composite key to represent each one of the records. Okay? So now after you set this up, let me, let's just uh, go through the actual, sorry here, let me close this one. Let me just go very quickly and actually open the relevant file. So let me just go here. Uh, we have it here, chapter seven, and the file is this one. So I'm going now to open the Excel file to show you how the data, the data that we are auditing, how it looks like. Okay, so opening the Excel, and this is the original the original table. As you see, it is much more complex in this format, but we brought it, we unpivoted it in data flow into a, a better format for understanding. And now, for example, if we pick and choose a specific look, let's just take, for example, uh, Union City, okay? United States, California, uh, Union City. Okay, and I will now uh, go here and add, here we don't have any value, let's add five. So we expect, we expect to have a new record here, right? Let's also uh, take one number in Union City and remove it all together. Let's take this one, which is helmets, and remove it all together. And now let's take another one, uh, from here and change it from 14 into, let's add here two zeros. And I will save it now. Okay. And now after I saved it, imagine now that uh, uh, when I do this change, this is basically someone else, right? That you need, you need to track changes and 
Lots of people are modifying this Excel file and you want just to be able to track it down. So I will go now back to uh, the test automation uh, workspace where we did the orchestration for, for this data flow, right? This one is where we did the unpivot. This is where we have the snapshots. I will click now refresh again one more time. And Power Query will uh, get this data and store it here. If you see, if I will uh, uh, refresh this folder again, you see that I have a second snapshot now for today. Just to show you uh, how the data looks like, let's uh, download it. But basically, if you want to build your own solution, your own auditing solution without relying on my app, uh, you, you can use Power Query, use the data lake connector in Power Query to uh, go through the folder of these files and start comparing the records with Power Query. So let me just rename this one to CSV, so I will open it in Excel very quickly. Okay, and you see this is the data in the CSV file. After we prepared it using the data flow, and now our solution will track the changes between these two versions. So let's go back to the app. I will go now to the app. Uh, let me let me uh, start uh, first. I will start with the app that I already configured. I don't want to spend time on the configuration as well. So here I have everything uh, uh, already configured and I will click refresh. This snap, this uh, uh, solution is a bit slower compared to what you would typically uh, compared with the data that you load in. The reason is because uh, we are going for each one of the recent snapshots and we compare all the records by the keys that you provided in the Excel file. And the comparison sometimes can take a lot of time if you know Power Query and Merge. This, these operations may take a significant time. To save, to save uh, you the time to do it, you see now it's over, so it wasn't that bad. But uh, there are, in my website, I, I provide some recommendations how to handle with big data. But the bottom line is that this solution was not supposed to take terabytes of data and compare changes in across terabytes of data. It was supposed to allow you in a smart way make the decision of what you want to monitor, bring a small portion, a sample of the data that can represent in a good way the entire data set and use that as part of the automation. So here in this case, uh, uh, let's, let's check out the report after the refresh was done. Let's just refresh here as well, in, just in case. And let's just move directly to uh, the differences. I hope that it, it's going to work. Okay, let's see. Okay, so you see we have here three changes, three differences in uh, June 10th. I'm clicking here. And let's just drill down and see. So we see, uh, let me try to uh, zoom on this one so you'll see it in more detail. Okay, so what, what did we find out? Okay. In, uh, in the data today, in the revenues table, right, we deleted one record, we added one record, and we also have the change. Remember, I added two zeros, so this was really detected here. So just to show you, the demo, the demo god was, uh, was gra graceful for me today. Uh, and also just to give you kind of a uh, uh, a way to see to see this data in another way, I can now go to edit mode. And in edit mode, now when I'm in edit mode, I can take this page, let's copy this page and bring it into a new page. Okay, I just want to show you another way to understand the context of the differences 
is for me now, instead of using the row number, the change in the row, I can, I can go here under the diff, diffs details table and include here additional information like this one. You see now I have another row item here. Uh, this one is the column row. The other one that you have out of the box is actually called row changes. I just renamed it to be row to be shorter on the on the visual. But now you can see, we actually can see, remember we did a change in Union City. We removed some, uh, one value we removed, another one we added. So now you can actually see the context of the change based on the relevant keys that are uh, that that were detected in the data. So instead of just looking in row numbers, you can say, oh, actually, Union City, California helmets is really, really important for me. So, you know, you can now start building on your own some filtering on or, or other customizations that will allow you to uh, just isolate the changes that are more important to you. And by that, I think uh, uh, we concluded the demo. And <laughs> uh, let me know if you have any questions. That sounds great. It was it was a amazing amazing work. Uh, what do you uh, like based on your experience? Uh, of course, data quality is important for everyone. But what do you see as uh, like what method people use to do this? Uh, kind of things already, like if they don't use this application? Yeah, I think uh, uh, honestly, and I, I see it everywhere, uh, many, many practitioners don't even know anything about Power Query. So mm -hmm. you end up in a project uh, where we have Power BI practitioners. They are responsible basically on the visualizations and lots of other smart people are responsible for everything else with other tools. And uh, many times uh, we see situations where our Power BI developers are just, you know, waiting for the data to move from here to here. And every time that there is a data quality issue, it takes time to detect. Our Power BI developers mm -hmm. detect the, the, the issues sometimes manually, and then somebody needs to make the change and you wait for several more days. And it's like, repeated over and over mm. and over and the, the the idea that all these all those hopes in the way in the pipeline of data preparation and calculations and you, you can use power query to really quickly develop a solution that will compare data across different uh, scenarios and and build you something that will be more meaningful that's how i, I look at it and by the way, I didn't show you today this one uh, in this demo, but basically, you know, uh, analyzing Excel allows you to connect to live Power BI datasets as well. So imagine that you will, have, in, let's say you work in, a, in your company and you have a very, very critical Power BI report and perhaps more than one that you want to detect uh, breaking changes. You can use Excel to connect live to that Power BI datasets, save that Excel somewhere on like on a SharePoint folder, use data flows to connect now to that Excel and refresh it and, and start to track changes. And those changes will show you breaking changes even on, uh, on measures because you, you are testing the measures using this technique. Great. That, that. That's amazing. Thank you. A uh, question from Fernando. Um, to what extent this app is kind of like detaching the need for learning Power Query or M and just press the button to do things? Uh, definitely, if you don't know Power Query a lot, you can just bring data using data flows without the need to prepare it. Just bring it as it is. You'll need to understand the data to define the keys in the Excel. And that's it. You don't need to know Power Query beyond just the very basic use of data flow. Okay. And, and in what scenarios uh, people need to know more about that for more some so, more complex? Yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, so basically, uh, imagine a situation where your data is not just a view in a SQL server. Your data may be 
a very complex Excel spreadsheet like the one that I show you in the screenshot, and you want to be able, imagine that you have a, a, an Excel workbook with uh, 50 different tables in the same grid. Right? So if you want to be able to track each one of those little tables in, in a single table in data flow, because you want to understand the meaning, then you can use Power Query to clean it up and create those snapshots of, of areas in your in your Excel. Otherwise, you can say, I don't know Power Query, so here is a grid. I don't know anything about it. I know rows and columns. You can just need to add an index to the data flow, hmm. and that index will serve you to track changes. However, if a data analyst will now add a new column, a blank column in the Excel, it will be reported as a new record. Right? A lot of new records will be detected. And if you want to make it a smarter solution, then you would need Power Query skill sets to be able to smartly get what you want for your data flow. That is great. And, and just on the concepts of like data quality in general, not technical specific, like what things people need to be, uh, let's say, familiar to understand the concepts of like data quality and build something on like that. There, is there yeah. a book on like these are things to consider? A video? What is the good good place to learn about? Yeah. So let me let me share here on my screen uh, another element that I wanted to sh to show, uh, and basically. Uh, so I have here a, a few slides that I will share with you uh, to explain. Uh, yeah, if you see my screen. So, you know, just as a disclaimer, uh, uh, I'm a Power BI expert. I'm not, my business is mainly not to do uh, data quality uh, all day long. So in this case, uh, uh, you may find some experts in data quality that will be able to come and say, oh, you missed this functionality or that functionality. Having said that, I, I, I did, uh, uh, I, I do recommend to go through the Gartner uh, to look in specific uh, search for data quality solutions and magic quadrant by Gartner uh, to be able to read some of the existing out of the out of the shelf solutions. Uh, in this uh, in the next two slides, I have here all the requirements by Gartner for what constitutes of a good data quality solution. So you have here lots of functionality. Uh, including, for example, ability to connect to multiple data sources, uh, to provide data profiling over time and visualization, monitoring capability, parsing capabilities for data that is, uh, uh, you know, requires some cleansing, uh, standardization, matching, linking, merging. You have here also some, you know, more like a, a master data management concepts, like metadata management, and you will typically see the same companies that provide you that good data quality solutions are also the companies that provide you MDM solutions. And here, what I'm saying is, you know, there is there is a, always good time for the high-end solutions, and there are always even better times to acknowledge that you cannot do everything with very expensive and complicated tools. And if you already have Power BI experts in your team, they can own uh, their own data quality and, and be able to deliver that. So that's here is an example. I, I'm going through all the bullets from Gartner and, and say like, what, what is missing in my solution and what, what are the gaps? So yes, there are some gaps, mainly uh, big data. As an example, I, I don't have a good coverage for big data. Data flows is not a distributed computing technology. Uh, but I do feel very comfortable that this kind of solution uh, can be a game changer. And if you have very strong Power Query people in your team, uh, they can build the, this solution on their own with the knowledge that they possess. And then you have a, a very good low-code solution that is extremely uh, expendable, uh, ex sorry, expensive, ex expense, extensible, and uh, and customizable to meet many many needs. So, something to consider. That is, 
That is amazing. One, uh, one probably like last question from me. Uh, like based on my experience, when I talk about power query with people, like I have normally two different type of audience. One are those who are coming from, let's say, Excel background, business background, and they find power query like amazing. Uh, uh, and there are some who are also coming from uh, who are coming from like IT background, BI background, database background. They say, well, Power Query is amazing, fantastic, but I rather to do these things in SQL using SSIS, using T-SQL, and things like that. At the end, uh, like they say, well, I want to do this data quality. I want to do this data transformation. I rather to do them all back in my data warehouse. My experience, however, was that this doesn't happen that much. It takes a lot of time. What, what is your get on this? Yeah, how how do you think, see that? Uh, yeah, definitely, uh, there are very uh, there are many talented people out there in the industry that are magicians in SQL. And psychologically, for them to abandon their magic and move to something completely new, I can understand why they will not. Uh, uh, only early adapters and you know people that are very flexible in their thinking will decide to abandon one technology and move to another. Uh, and that's why, uh, in in many cases, uh, I feel that uh, we are in a kind of a battle uphill uh, with a lot of traditional uh, thinking that. Uh, is against change. I do acknowledge that in the end, there are a lot of things that you need. You need the high-end solutions, and this will not solve all your all the problems of the world. But because, uh, you know, it's like Pareto principle, 20% of the problems are solved by very expensive 80% of the time that they need to develop those things. You end up with 80% of the problems uh, unattended with problem in data quality. So I'm saying let's spend 20% of efforts with low code to cover those 80% without competing with those guys because they still need to spend 80% of time on developing, uh, covering only 20% of the data that is mission critical for them and and they already have the funding and the and the headcount to to deliver that those crazy high-end solutions. But in the end, I know the unique uh, uh, situation of all of us is that this is an amazing technology and, and important people in many organizations are not aware of it. So in, with the same wow impact that we make today on, on report developers that we save them time, tomorrow you can do the wow impact on decision makers and solution architects in the organization that they will discover how you can cover those 80% of the data challenges and the data quality. That, that is great. So uh, so don't consider Power Query as a competition for your understanding or learning of T-SQL SSIS. Consider it as a complement. Uh, sometimes you can do some stuff faster here and in the world of Power BI, you don't want to wait for like ages for something to appear. Exactly. Awesome. Thank you for a great presentation. Uh, I think that was pretty much all the questions we went through. And any last thing from you? Just uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, getting me the opportunity to share my thoughts. Uh, I think, uh, as you know, as you know, Power Query is one of the, the coolest, the coolest capabilities that you have to think Power BI. And for some really strange reason, lots of people are not aware of it in any way and don't take it and, and, and are not embracing the potential for, for this technology. So we are here to convince them one by one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I totally share your passion with Power Query. And whenever I go and present something, I always emphasize on how important the Power Query is. Uh, amazing. Thank you for your great presentation. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we'll until the next uh, until the next meeting. Stay safe. Bye, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye bye.